Massachusetts and today I'm going to talk about biological filtration in the marine tank and I'm going to let you know how you can create a thriving bacterial population in your tank that will keep it more stable, keep your fish healthier and fatter, and keep your coral happy. I'm going to be using a few products and uh, the kind of the showpiece of today's video is the Marine Pure Ceramic Filter Media. This is the 8 inch by 8 inch by 4 inch ceramic block and it's a porous ceramic media that kind of imitates live rock but is significantly better in a variety of ways. Uh, I'm going to be seeding this block with some live bacterial culture. This is the Prodibio BioDigest. It's a live bacterial strain made up of several kind of nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria that's going to kickstart this media. I'm also going to be using the Reefin pods. These are Tisby Copa pods and they're small enough that they will be able to live directly inside of this block. So it's going to give me some of the benefits of having a, more of like a refugium type environment for Copa pods. Some other things I'm going to be using to seed this block are Reef Chili. That's going to give the pod something to munch on. It's kind of like a slow digesting protein compared to some of the quicker stuff we're going to throw on top. In addition, I'm going to be using 5 milliliters of white vinegar. This is an organic carbon source that's really going to fuel the bacterial culture that's going to live in this block, and it's going to, it's going to accelerate the growth of that culture very, very quickly. I'm also going to be using some generic spirulina powder. This is a, a, a microalgae that the Tisby Cobra pods will be able to eat. This is a dried version, it's not a live version. If you did have a live kind of a phytoplankton like Nanochloropsis, that might be more ideal because it wouldn't break down and die right away. But I'm going to be using a very small amount of this to give the pods some fuel so that they will start producing offspring as quickly as possible. To dose that, I'm going to be using some uh, tank water, and I've already added the 5 milliliters of vinegar in here. So let's get started. So I'm going to pre-rinse this marine pier block with some RO water, and what I want you to notice is how the water just flows right into the block, but that also the block will hold a significant amount of the water. The block will hold about 10 times its weight in water. can see it doesn't run around the edges. Even if you tip it sideways, it's, it's not running down the face of the block. It's actually flowing right into the block itself. I can feel this getting heavier and heavier. Now even after I let go, you can see how much water is just going to flow right out of this block. Some of the downsides of live rock is that it takes up a lot of space in your tank. A lot of the live rock that's out there, especially the dead rock, is extremely dense and it doesn't have a pore network that allows water to pass through the rock. Just wanted to grab a nice close-up shot of that pore network on this marine pure block. You can really see that it's made up of much more air than ceramic. And the best part is that almost all of these pores have a path right through the block. So no matter where the water enters, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's going to flow through flow through the media. The other good thing is that the pores are almost the perfect size for these Tisby copepods. I'm pretty positive that they'll be able to live right on the surface of the block but also much deeper and what that allowed the pods to do is to consume the food that builds up inside the block hopefully keeping it a, a lot cleaner in the long run. Many of the live rocks out there, the, most of the surface area of the live rock is very close to, to the surface of the rock itself. As you get to the center, there isn't a pore network that allows water to make its way to the middle of the rock. So while there may be pores in the center of the rock, they're kind of locked out because there's calcium walls that seal them in on the sides. The difference is the marine pure block is man-made and the pore network that you see on the surface travels all the way through the block. So the water will actually pour in one side, pour right out the other side, and if you try that with any type of live rock, even like the Fiji, Bukani, uh, 
conga branches, anything, it's just going to run over the surface of the rock. It's not actually going to pour right through the rock. So the, the marine pier block will hold about 10 times its weight in water. And what's even more impressive than that is that this has 5,700 square feet of surface area inside of it. Now that's, that's pretty typical for a rock like Fiji that would be the same weight. But the difference is, again, that for the Fiji, that surface area is only available on the outside of the rock. Here it goes all the way through. So, what a lot of people will do with the marine pier block is they'll put it in their sump and they'll try to use it to imitate sort of like a deep sand bed. And what the company advertises is that on the outside of the block, the bacteria that require oxygen will grow, but as you get closer to the center, it'll create a low oxygen zone and you'll get that denitrifying bacteria that people really want to drive the nitrates down in their tank. So that's what I'm going to try to do with this block. And to get it started, I'm going to seed it with the products I just mentioned. This is the BioDigest. This is the bacterial starter cart culture that I'll be using to seed the Marine Pure. It's made up of several strains of nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria. Uh, they recommend that you dose one of these into your tank every week and a half or so, but I'm just going to dump two of these right on the block. That will give it a, a nice good start. Now when you're adding a non-live rock product to your marine tank, it's going to take quite a while for the bacterial culture to really develop in the rock. It might take weeks, could even take months, depending on how much bacteria you have in your tank. So, like I said, what we're going to do is we're really going to... I know nothing good happens quickly in the marine hobby, but, you know, everyone wants to push that envelope, me included, and I want this to be working for me as soon as I drop it in the tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the reef and pods, then I'm going to add a mixture of acetic acid and a few different types of food onto the block itself. And with that, I'm going to add BioDigest, and I'm going to add two ampules. I'm going to add them directly to the kind of a food and vinegar mixture. So again, that'll kickstart the pod population with the reef chili and spirulina, and that'll kickstart the bacterial population with the white vinegar. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add the reef and pods. And I'm not going to be too crazy with this, I'm just going to pour it right on top of the block. Some of it will flow through. I'm not too worried because I think the block will actually filter out the pods. And if it doesn't filter out all the pods, well, then I know that they're evenly distributed throughout the entire block, which is really my goal here. It's really amazing how you can just pour water right onto this ceramic media and it just goes right in. It doesn't pool up on the surface or anything. Here's a close-up shot of those reef and pods. And I purchased these direct from the vendor and I've had them in refrigeration for about two days now. A lot of people are concerned that if you buy pods online that you're not getting a live product, that the pods will most likely be dead by the time they get to you but I don't think that's anything to really worry about. These are little Tisby pods and they're very resilient. They can live up to two weeks in refrigeration. When the temperature of the water goes down, they go into almost like a hibernation state and they consume very little uh, food and oxygen. You can see here that they're still a little bit lethargic. The water is probably about 55 degrees right now. But by the time they get my tank, they'll be thriving. So what I've put in here already is about 5 milliliters of vinegar. Again, that's for the bacterial culture that we're going to be starting. Uh, that's an organic carbon source that bacteria just loves. Now I'm going to put a very small amount of reef chili. Again, this is for the cocoa pods. I want them nice and fat and happy, which in turn will make my fish fat and happy. 
and then I'm also going to go ahead and add a little bit of spirulina. Now this is going to be all green and disgusting, but I have a feeling that the pods are going to rub it. So before I add the bacteria, I'm just going to mix this all up. You can see how green that is. It's going to stain this block pretty green too. So these biodigest ampules are glass. You have to be a little bit careful with them. Uh, they recommend breaking the tips off with some airline tube, but you can also just grab a pair of rubber gloves and do it that way. So what you'll do is you'll break off one end, and it won't drip out yet because of the negative air pressure. You can see it doesn't, it still doesn't drip out. So what you do is, once you've got it positioned where you want it, you break off the other end, and then it'll flow right out. So that's one ampule right into the food stuff for the block, and for good measure, I'm going to do two. Why not? Now, some of the things to be careful with when you're introducing large bacteria cultures to a tank is that they can cause a bacterial bloom which will consume all the oxygen in your tank that, that's the risk really your tank will get really cloudy and then the bacteria that are blooming up will consume all of the oxygen and the nutrients and what will happen is it can start a cascading ammonia effect where the small little critters are dying off because there's not enough oxygen. They die, they release ammonia. That causes fish and smaller, slightly larger critters to start dying off because of the ammonia and the low oxygen levels. And from there, it's just a domino effect that cascades throughout the tank. And some aquarists have lost their entire tank through an effect like that. So we're going to try to avoid that. I'm already dosing 30 milliliters of vinegar daily to my tank, which is only about 30 gallons. So I already have a very strong bacterial culture and very low levels of nitrate and phosphate. So I'm not too worried about a big bloom in the water column itself, that there might be a big bloom on this rock. That's why I'm limiting the amount of nutrients that I'm adding. So once this food is eaten up, the bacterial culture will kind of subside and find its level. What's nice is that little animals like the Tisby copepods also love to eat bacteria. So as that bacterial culture grows on the rock, the culture of pods will grow as well. So now I'm going to add this to the block, make this nice white block a very pleasant shade of green. So again, I'm just going to spread this throughout the entire surface of the block. It'll flow right through and find its level. In my tank, I'm going to put the, the face that I'm, I'm covering right now against the glass wall so that whatever is sitting on the surface won't just blow right off. Okay, so that smells great. <laughs> A nice little bacteria cake for my fish. I hope they love it. So you can see not much is really even dripping out. And the next step is just to add this to the tank. Now for the final step, I'm going to add this block to the sump in my tank. And just so we all know, you're looking at my sump area, this is a zero judgment zone. It's not clean and beautiful like the rest of the display. So this is a 30 gallon deep blue tank. It's 24 by 24 by 12. And it's considered to be like a shallow format. Uh, it has a 10 gallon sump, it's just a basic 10 gallon tank you can get from Petco uh, during their dollar a gallon sale for ten dollars and I've just got a few pieces of glass cut and placed in as baffles. Now there's quite an oversized skimmer and what I want to show you is the amount of skimmer production that you get when you carbon dose. So I dose 30 milliliters of vinegar in this tank daily and what you can see is that this is four days production from that skimmer 
and there's this is a small tank, not too many fish, but this is a load of bacteria and gunk that it's pulling out of the tank. And that bacteria grows by eating the nitrate, the ammonia, the dissolved organics in the water column, and also the acetic acid in the vinegar. And that fuels this gross stuff that's getting pulled out of the tank. So, in my opinion, if you're running a skimmer and you're not carbon dosing, you're really not getting the value out of your skimmer. I'll tell you one other thing. When you dose carbon, the skimmate production is disgustingly stinky. So that's the one downside. Now what I've done is I've added about four inches of space between the skimmer body and the last chamber of the sump. The block right now is not submerged all the way. I'm going to have to take some time to move the piping a little bit to get about a half inch of extra space so that I can slide the block down. So in the final shot, I'm just going to show you the positioning of the block, and that'll be a wrap. So the block is in place, and it's just before that final stage of my sum. And what you can see is it's, it fit pretty perfectly, and that's because I have an 8-inch baffle and I keep an 8 inch water level for my skimmer which uh, as luck would have it is the perfect size for this block so the water will flow through the sump right across the top of this block and then out through the return so I'm pretty happy with this product and I'm looking forward to seeing how it might affect my tank so as soon as I find out I'll give you guys an update Anyway, thank you for watching. If there's anything else you'd like to learn about or you'd like to see a video on, just leave it in the comment section. And again, thank you for following along, and I hope to see you all again soon.